and guests. Today I'm going to share with you the two steps, just two, you need in order to include an illustration in a publication. Let's say you've written an article, and that article is going to be published in a journal, and you'd like to include a few images. What do you do? Well, first, you need to obtain reproducible art. That is, you need a high-resolution image. And in this day and age, that's likely a digital file. Second, you need to obtain permission from any rights holders, such as an artist or a photographer or maybe a publisher. So let's start with a few examples to demonstrate these two steps. I have a few handouts. I, I hope you can share them. But our first example is this painting of a cute little black dog. And I thought I'd use a dog since black cats seem to get all the attention near Halloween. But this dog is actually Barney. He's the former first dog of the United States. And this was painted by George W. Bush. So for step number one, we need to obtain a high resolution image. And one of my coworkers actually included this image in an article that he published. And so he contacted the office of George W. Bush in order to get the image. This image is actually pretty simple in that for step two, obtaining the rights, he was also able to contact the office of George W. Bush as, as the artist, Bush could provide the permission to publish it. Now let's move on to a slightly more complicated example. This is an artwork that, as you can see, we put on the cover of one of our GRI publications. It's a sculpture. So for step number one, getting the reproducible art, we discovered that this is in the Getty's collection, so we can go ahead and contact imaging services in order to get our reproducible art. For our step two, contacting any rights holders, we might have already found out during our research, or the Getty might tell us when we contact them, that this is actually by two different artists. The display cabinet was made in the 17th century, while this little assemblage on top was made by a modern day artist. It's a modern recreation. So we think we need to contact two people, but since this was made in the 1600s, it's now public domain, so we don't need to contact anyone. For the top part, though, we need to contact the artist for permission. Now, since this is a three-dimensional object, we'll also need to contact the photographer because they're given rights, given that they chose the angle in which to shoot the object and the lighting, etc. So, not too bad, we just need to contact the Getty, and since they shot the photograph, that's taken care of as far as the photographer and then the artist for this work. Now for one last example, here's an image that we put in the Getty Research Journal. It's a page spread from another publication. So the author of this article wanted to actually show the layout of the book, the design. So for this one, step one, since we have this publication in the GRI, we can go ahead and just have imaging services at the GRI shoot shoot the image, so that's pretty simple. <laughs> For step two, however, we first need to look at the pages and we see there are two photographs and they're each showing a different artwork. Now, we'll need to get permission from the artist for this work and for this work, so that's two rights holders so far. Since they're both three-dimensional works, we'll also need to get permission from the photographer of this work and the photographer of this one, so we're up to four rights holders. And lastly, since we are showing the layout, the design of the pages, we're going to need permission from whoever holds copyright, and that's likely the publisher of this book. But you can go ahead and actually look on the copyright page of this book to figure that out. You may have to contact the publisher to say, do you hold the copyright? If not, who does? And go ahead and contact that person. Now, these are the two steps you need to take for each image in a publication, but this may or may not be the easier part because after you know who you need permission for or who you need to contact for an image, 
you actually have to find out how to contact them. With well-known artists, that may be easier. You may have um, a studio to contact, or if they're deceased, their estate. But sometimes it's a little bit more complicated. You may not know how to find the person. Sometimes we have to contact postcard companies from the 50s. And how do you go about doing that? It just takes a little Googling. So the, in conclusion, I will say the two steps you need to take when publishing an image are to first find the image, get reproducible art, and second, you need permission from any rights holders. And just lastly, I will say that please allow yourself plenty of time to do this because it can take a long time and people don't always like responding to your queries. Thank you.